Welcome back everybody and right now what we're going to do is we're going to navigate through the nmap and see different types of options that we didn't cover and see what kind of output we get using those options. So if you open up simply nmap right here you will see some of the options that we did use such as for example dash f for fragment packets but we didn't really see the output of that scan. So if you simply just go nmap and then 192.168.1.6, which is the IP address of my actual Windows 10 host, press here enter. It won't take too long to actually finish, but we're going to see whether there is any types of difference between this scan and between the scan where we actually fragment our packets and split it into smaller ones. So right here we can see 70% done. Uh, we get the it all finished in 15 seconds, only one port open, and it is this port right here. But right now, let us clear the screen and let us use dash F option and specify the same IP address, which is 192.168.1.6. Press here enter and let's see whether there is any differences between the outputs of these two scans. We can use upper arrow in order to see uh, how much it takes to finish. As we can see, the output is rather the same, just this scan has finished in 5 seconds less. Uh, or in 10.41 seconds. Now, there is no difference between the outputs, it is rather the same. Just what this option, as we said before, does is it helps us bypass the actual firewall by fragmenting packets into smaller packets. Now, let's see the more detailed or more advanced use of this option with the dash dash MTU. Now, if you simply just type something like this and map, dash dash mtu and then for example specify 8 now don't worry i will explain everything just let me type it and then the ip address which is 192.168.1.6 uh, this is the more advanced option of actually fragmenting packets uh, because using the mtu which stands for maximum transmission unit and the number 8 simply specifies that you can send maximum 8 bytes so what this actual command allows us to do is manually uh, decide what is the maximum actual size of packets that we want to send. In our case, we set that to be 8 bytes with the dash dash MTU, which once again stands for maximum transmission unit. And if you simply just press your enter, we'll get the same output as before, just our packets will be fragmented up to 8 bytes. So you can see it does take a little bit longer to finish this scan, as with the simple dash F option, we actually finish the scan in 10 seconds. And this one actually took 15.12 seconds to finish. Okay. So that is what we can do with actually fragmenting packets. Now this can be useful once you actually need to bypass a certain firewall rule, which basically says that they do not deal with larger types of packets. So you actually need to fragment everything into a certain size in order to be able to scan. Now let's take a look at another option, which is dash D. If you simply just open the nmap menu, you should see dash D somewhere around here. As we can see here, it is. It is a decoy as it says cloak a scan decoys what that means basically is that it will send packets from random IP addresses and random ports as well as random types of packets. Now that is only there in order for us to disguise in some different traffic and so it will all look like a normal traffic to a certain target machine. So for example they're getting packets from all kinds of IP addresses. In those packets there are also some real packets that are uh, from our scan. So in order to actually do that, we can simply just type nmap-d, so capital D, and then if you simply just type rnd, and then two dots, and then you simply specify 20, this will basically send 20 different packets from 20 different IP addresses, I believe, and then you specify the IP address that you want to scan, which is in our case, once again, so here it is. Yeah, we can't really specify that. This is an actual IP address that we need to specify, so not 20. We can simply just type right here, for example, Google DNS server, so 8888. And we can see right here, the scan will seem that it's coming from the actual DNS Google servers. So this scan has finished. We got the same output as before. We're actually sending random packets from this IP address, and we're scanning uh, uh, this machine right here, which is Windows 10 machine. So make sure that you add dash D and then R and D, two dots and then 8888. Or you don't really need to specify 8888, you can specify any IP address that you want. 
as we can see this is on 74 percent 75 percent but the actual output will be rather the same for all of these scans they are simply just there uh, for the variety uh, since I don't really have any type of firewall or any type of rules to actually bypass the output for all of these scans will be the same so let us see 85% right now okay so here it is as we can see it finished everything correctly it seems like it did it uh, actually scanned this IP address which we didn't want so let us open our nmap menu right here and see dash t decoy so what if we simply just specify the same command without this or even better we can open the manual for nmap right here we can go all the way down and find the option which is going to be explained in more detail so just scroll all the way down You can see this is a huge file consistent of everything that nmap is capable of and what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to go over this file and uh, check out these different types of scans which are mostly going to be these scans right here such as for example tcp sin scan tcp connect scan udp scans and so on and so on now we are not interested in that at the moment what we are interested in is in the dash d option so let's scroll all the way down and let's see what type of actual syntax we need to specify this is dash t okay so here it is cloak a scan with decoys as it says it causes a decoy scan to be performed which makes it appear to the remote host that the host you specify as decoys are scanning the target network too thus their ids might report five to ten port scans from unique ip addresses but they won't know which ip was scanning them and which were innocent decoys. Right, this or while this can be defeated through router path tracing, response dropping, and other active mechanisms, it is generally an effective technique for hiding your IP address. Uh, separate each decoy host with commas, and you can uh, optionally use ME as one of the decoys to represent the position of your real IP address. Let me just see right here. So here is the RND. Uh, you can also use the RND to generate a random non-reserved IP address or RND number to generate number of, ad of actual addresses. So I'm not really sure why that didn't work then because we did specify RND and then for example 20 for 20 random IP addresses. Let us try it once again. So nmap-d RND 20 and then the IP address. Okay. So it seems that it works right now. Uh, it could possibly be that in the previous actual scan, what I did is what, that I actually separated this with a space between the two dots and the 20. Therefore, it actually counted this 20 as an IP address and it couldn't really scan it. Let us see if that was the problem. So if we add space right here, yeah, that was the problem. So as it says right here, fail to determine route to this IP address because it actually, if you add a space, it will consider this an IP address and not a part of this command right here okay so what a normal command looks like is this right here make sure to not split this okay so that would be about it for this actual option let us continue with a different option which if we open up our nmap menu would probably be the spoofing of source address or source IP address so we can simply just type something like nmap dash s and then 192.168.1.15 and if we specify two actual ip addresses it will say warning if dash s is being used to fake your source address you may also have to use uh, dash e interface and pn okay so if you use dash e and eth0 and dash pn press here enter cannot assign requested address but it is performing this scan so we use the dash e option for our interface and you can check out which interface you're using simply just by typing ifconfig in your command or pardon me in your terminal if you're simply running over a wireless network your ip your 
network adapter will be different name, therefore you will not be specifying ETH0, but if you're using Cal Linux over cable connection, you will specify ETH0 just as I did. And this dash PN option basically stands for uh, the bypassing the ping scans, I believe, or something like that. It will be an option that actually allows us to scan the host without pinging it or something like that. Let me see dash PN right here. Dash PN, 3 total host is online, skip host discovery, yeah, this is in case our actual host or our target machine is blocking our ping requests, therefore we will treat all hosts as online and we will skip the pinging of that specific host, because if we do ping it, that host will actually appear as offline in case it is blocking our requests, okay? So simple as that. So this is the actual faking of a source IP address. So once again, you need to use dash E for the interface and dash PN for the ping requests, okay? Or for disabling ping requests. Now, another small advice, once you actually scan a black box target, and by black box, I mean you don't know anything about it, you want to actually get caught, or pardon me, you don't want to get caught by security systems. So your best thing to do is spoof yourself and try all these options at once because even if you get caught, you will get caught with spoofed Mac, spoofed IP address and so on. Therefore, you can just spoof it once again for the next scan and security systems will not be able to recognize you as a previous attacker. Okay, so basically that will be about it for this tutorial. We saw some different options in this video, such as slash or dash dash MTU, which stands for maximum transmission unit. We saw how we can actually determine which size of packets we are going to send. We also saw how we can actually create a decoy, which is going to send packets from random IP addresses. In our case, we used random and then 20, so from 20 different IP addresses. And we also saw dash C option, which allows us, or pardon me, dash S option, which allows us to actually spoof our source IP address. Okay, so that will be about it for this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we're going to cover more options, more advanced options with Nmap using the Nmap manual. And after it, we're going to finish our Nmap section. So hope I see you there and take care. Bye.